the vehicle behind you is a 1928 SOS QL. Uh, it was new to Northern General Transport in 1928 and they bought 65 in that year. Northern General were part of British Electric Traction along with Midland Red uh, and various other bus companies and the chief engineer of the Midland Red was a gentleman called Mr LG Wyndham Shire. Uh, Wyndham Shire is where you get the name SOS from. Nobody really knows what it stands for but it's probably Shire's own specification or Shire's omnibus specification and as being part of the, the larger group Northern decided to buy these high capacity purpose designed buses. Um, in North West Durham in particular there was a lot of routes with very low bridges and obviously you needed a high capacity bus which was a single decker uh, and when they originally bought these could be classes of 40 seater they had three pull out seats that slid across the back three rows but the transport commissioners didn't really like that so that removed those so there were registers of 37 seaters. The bus was acquired largely as spares for a complete one which unfortunately went to a different group who disbanded and the bus was um, broken up. So in the late 1970s Robert Atkinson who'd actually rescued this particular bus from a, a caravan park in Barden Mill decided it would be a good idea to have what is really an iconic northern bus restored for use at Beamish. So in the late 1970s the work started um, and by 1985 it was a drivable chassis. We then set to to build really what is in effect a replica body and that took quite a long time. We're, we're not just obviously rebuilding buses so with all the other work at the museum it was 20, 2012 before we actually completed the project. There is another QL which is in very poor condition in um, the Bamot Museum in Withal. Um, they also have a, an ex-Northern Q-type which is the model just before this one, so it's 1927. So at some point in the future it would be nice to get the two of them together again. The bus has one or two little peculiar quirks which the drivers and presumably the fitting staff got used to. Um, it's not that obvious from the front but the engine and transmission are actually offset to the near side in order to give the driver just a little bit more space in what is really a, a very small cab. The driver sits on top of the fuel tank um, in common with a lot of vehicles of that age the throttle is in the middle um, and uh, it's a four-speed crash box so it is quite a, an interesting thing to drive. The other thing that you have to remember is that because of the design of the steering drop linkage it only has about half lock when you're turning to the left so if you want to do any tight maneuvers you always turn right rather than left Northern General Transport they, they purchased 65 of these buses because they were of very lightweight and very responsive they'd had quite a few SOS buses before that of different types um, and this was the, the first which had four-wheel brakes. It does mention in the cab that this vehicle is fitted with four-wheel brakes, use them with due care. Um, they were very light, very responsive um, and considered to be quite quick in the day, although the service speed which is registered on the side of the bus is 20 miles per hour. So they, they would get across the ground quite quickly. The bus is not normally on public display at the museum. It is out and about for special events and special occasions largely due to the fact that it is a, an original vehicle. Um, it's obviously a, a, a genuine chassis which does take a little more, well a lot more maintenance than a modern vehicle. So we do tend to restrict its use to high days and holidays. When new they were designed with a 10-year service life and if we put it into service on a regular basis that's probably how long it would last. Um, it survived for over 20 years in its 
first existence, but that was largely due to Adolf Hitler coming along and it meant that the Northern couldn't replace them after 10 years and they kept them going and in fact this one survived till 1949-1950 in service. The Friends of Beamish was established um, long before Beamish Museum actually in 1968 uh, as a, a focus group and a raise, means of raising money in order to promote the museum that was going to become Beamish in the years in the future. Uh, the Friends provide um, support in a financial way and also through voluntary work. We do a lot of restoration work in the workshops and we work with the full-time staff on events and other occurrences at the museum. If you would like to support the, the work of the Friends of Beamish, uh, it's quite possible to join via, uh, you can check on the museum's website, on the Friends website, and it's actually possible to join directly at the museum's visitor centre when you come to visit.